Good afternoon, everyone. Hope all is well. And we are back on this live session again, where we are going to be joined by a business entrepreneur who's going to be talking about how he got into business and what has he done so far in achieving success within his business entrepreneurship and many other things. So let's send this over to there we go Stuart. <laughs> Mataza. How are you well, doing? You can't, you, you can't see my flick. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, you see, it's the brand. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, not so bad. Not so bad. Good, good. How's your doctor's appointment? Uh, just a full MOT. Just making sure all the uh, faculties are working. Good stuff. But I think they are. <laughs> you, 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 yeah, well, you look fit and fine, so I'm sure it is working. Um, I, I'm on a weight loss regime. I... Um, I was poorly about 10 years ago. I think I might have told you, 10, 12 years ago, I had pneumonia. Oh, okay. Uh, didn't do me any good. And they put, they put you on steroids and, and you pile weight on. And, and then obviously lockdown come and I lost loads of weight. Then my knees give way. Uh, and then I've had to start losing weight again. So I'm good. Good you didn't have, good you didn't have pneumonia right now. Otherwise, they would have branded you as a COVID patient. Uh, uh, yeah, I was lucky. I was... I was Fractional on being on the uh, stay at home list, but uh, no, stay at home. It was like drink and eat as much as you can. <laughs> and then, my suit doesn't even fit me anymore. <laughs> me and you're on the same boat, same boat. Um, but thank you so much for coming on here, coming to share no, the knowledge and what you've done and what you've achieved in life and business entrepreneurship. Thank you so much for coming on here to share that knowledge with us today. Okay. Super. So before we move forward, Stuart, if you can introduce yourself as to who you are and what is it exactly that you do? Uh, well, for a kickoff, I do as little as possible, uh, as we all do, but you do try to make a difference in all the little things that you do. Uh, yes. I've been in, a, in and around property since uh, year two, well, I grew up in property. My father was a builder um, in the 80s. Um, obviously, a big crash in the 80s. They all got out of that. Uh, I ended up, of all my sins, working in the builders' merchants. Okay. You know, after I buried, I'd never get into the building game. But I yeah. suppose once it's in your system, it's in your system. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I worked in the builders' merchants up to about the year 1999. And then in 2000, I, uh, I left that and started working for a developer. Okay. Uh, and I was, his, I was like Tech Tab, his contracts manager, uh, operations manager, developer, okay. director. Uh, okay. And then we did that until 2003. And then at, at that point, it was boom Britain. There was a lot of buildings being built, a lot of uh, uh, all the big boys were there, your Termax, your Red Rose, your Wimpy Homes. They were flying noises up by the dozen, uh, by the yep. hundreds even. We, we, we could only do dozens. Uh, yep. So we folded that and went into international investment. Okay. And we, I did five years in Prague uh, on property investment. So we was um, selling investments to the UK investment. Again, along comes another crash in uh, 2008. Uh, and you've got to reinvent yourself again. You know, it's Absolutely. like you're, you're on the precipice of becoming a millionaire because of what you're doing on one side of the world. And then on the other side, it crashes and, and everything around you comes crashing down. So it's the old, old adage. You've got to wipe yourself down, get up and go again. Absolutely. Uh, from 2000, I mean... The, the, Stuart, the I just want to and, stop and, you there. I just want to stop you there and, 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 and what I want to get at is that, you know, when you were growing up, I mean, obviously you mentioned that you saw your father into the building trade and, and, and what he was doing. Um, but, you know, we, when we were growing up as kids or college going or school going, university going, whatever it is, we see a lot of careers in front of us and we aspire to be maybe a doctor, a lawyer, an architect, an engineer, you know. So when you were growing up, what is it that you wanted to to do was it as you saw your father you wanted to get into that trade 
or was it something totally unique that you wanted to do and say that no i don't want to do something that my father is doing i want to do something else but then you ended up in the building trade yourself when I, when i was 15 years of age at school my careers i, I went and sat with a careers advisor which i don't have to do that in schools anymore yeah. um I, and and i went and sat with a careers advisor which is like fourth year of high school so as you go into your fifth year what do you want to do and i was adamant i wanted to be a police officer i adamant i wanted to go into the Ooh. police and um but I, i was only five foot five and to nothing you know i was I'm only five foot seven now but i i hadn't i wasn't tall enough to go in any police force in the uk apart from the met yeah uh, you only had to be five foot six to get in the met and i could get in there um but the uh, 16 15 16 i didn't want to go down to uh, london to be in the police force so i the my police advisor said what's your strong subject and it was maths and i ended up being a trainee accountant uh, okay. that's what i started life as uh, and i did my first year cima chartered institute of management accountants i did that for the first year after wow. leaving school okay. I, i'm like some perk qualified and 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 that stuck with you and then the company i was working for unfortunately it went through again this is 1988 when there's a recession on again exactly uh, went through yeah. a restructure and i was only on a yts i was only earning 26 pound a week and they 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 said 26 well, you know, pound a week to find another job 26 a pound a yeah. week yeah you not see I the mean, grayers i mean that's and, history um, now right oh man now you now you now you offer people 100 pound a week and they're like no we're not doing that <laughs> yeah it's more like 100 pound a day so i i i registered with a company called hayes uh, accountancy and they okay. gave me a job in a, an independent builders merchant in bolton okay. uh, as an accountant and <laughs> so all of a sudden without trying i've got into the building game or into yep. the builders merchants game without wanting to get there because yep. i was an accountant yeah and then they got taken over the company i worked for got took over by a massive company from shropshire called bmss at the time okay and and then all of a sudden i was made redundant but we'll give you a job on the sales counter to put you over until you find another job and okay. i never looked back and i never looked back my, my forte then was sales so and just, i never looked how back. was it how was it working at that building merchant um brilliant i've got to say that honestly it was brilliant um, i mean what does a building merchant actually involve i mean normally when you think about building merchant they're like selling timber selling bricks selling um all sorts of stuff that you need to develop your properties is that right yeah that's what they do that, that's bills much have two facets to it they have the general public who come in and buy and then you have the direct sales which do all the big supply to to all the big contractors and so were you working in the general I supply or were you working in the the the, the contract supply i started in general supply on the yeah i started in general supply on the counter and then a friend of mine was looking for a new direct sales person which direct sales was dealing with all the big boys and i went, that was after about 5 6 weeks and i went into direct sales and that's all about relationships uh, and you know when the head buyers and the chief buyers are there you've got to get into them people and all of a sudden i'm i'm with this 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 set of people and i've gone from being this little guy on the counter to I'm I'm going checking a client to Manchester United against Chelsea wow. uh, and I've got a wine and dine them and uh, been my usual idiot self all, and all, uh, all, all, all on the all, all on the accounts of the company right swipe <laughs> 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 so yeah so all of a sudden I'm, I'm I've gone from being selling you know 20 pounds worth of timber to to getting a sale or an order for Hundred thousand pounds worth of bitumen, three hundred thousand bricks. Wow! You know, a full site of three hundred houses and supplying all this material. And and the job we did at the time, it's not like that anymore. But we were like specialised. There was only three, four centres around the country that did direct sales. Uh, yeah. And then and then all of a sudden you got what they call brass platers starting up. And these were people who just sat in the middle and shipped it from one person to another. Didn't have no no overhead, so they could undercut you. And the 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 model. you know developed as a lot of things do and then like I said when it got to the end of 1990s the job became not hard but more cumbersome it was like more of a chore than a pleasure to do it okay. i was st- i was turning over something like in 1999 with my i had three big claims and a lot of little ones but i was turning over like say probably 6 million pound a year in turnover okay. 
And I realized very quickly, I was working on margins, which was making sure my employer was making three, four hundred thousand pound a year profit on top of, you know, the turnover. And I was only being paid 30 grand, which, by the way, in 1999 was quite a good wage. Of course. But, but something happened and they didn't pay me my bonus one year, okay. uh, which I won't go into detail, but it was like it was a it, it was wrong what they did. And, and do you think? Anybody. And do you think? Uh, do you think uh, uh, a lot of the employees, not only at that point in the nineties or eighties, but even now in the two thousands, two thousand twenty, a lot of the employees go through that uh, issue that you had, where you did not get paid the bonus because you've done the hard work for it, you've done the sales for them, you're mm -hmm. due a commission. Why is that the companies do not honor that for their employees? I, I wish I knew the answer to that question because it's just, it's for me, it was just pure greed. You know, we had had a bad year. I, I, admittedly, the company had had a bad year. But I know from my own personal clientele, I'd hit my targets. And it, like I said, I won't go into detail, but the, the, the big boss man, Candy, said, oh, well, it's a company ethos and we're going to put it all into one. And because one section had lost an awful lot of money, we were all penalised. And I thought, well, that's really unfair. But the, the, the answer to that was, this is where I got the attitude to say, well, I'd rather be my own boss and I've got to get out of this because I would never treat my, my staff like that if I had staff. I'd, I'm self-employed, obviously, on my own. But I'd never treat my staff like that. If they've done a good job and they've made profit, I, I'm a big believer in sharing the profit. Of you course. Know, but, you of know, course. We're, all, we're all in this game to make money. We're not in this game to lose money. Uh, and why should one guy get more than the other guy? You know, So if we're all doing equal work, we should all be paid equally. I'm, I'm a big believer in equality. Um, I, and yeah, I just had to get into that environment. You know, it was it was nasty. The big wigs were getting more money. We were doing all the work, and they were getting the fund. And so, is this where you decide that. that 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 this is the time now for me to get into setting up my own business? I'd, that's what I wanted to do. Yes, is is the answer ultimately to that question. But I had to, I had to go from one step to another to get there. Okay. And like I said, it took another change in direction eight years later than that which made me decide to, right, this is now the time. But I went working self-employed in someone else's office, and he paid me, you know, like what I35 would be today, he paid me a weekly wage, and I did all the work for him. But if I wanted okay. to not turn in on a Friday, I didn't turn in on a Friday. I didn't have so to it was, it was according to your choice. It was like a, like a freelancing kind of job. Yeah. Is that right? Okay. But it, it was exactly freelance. But the beauty about freelance is when you're passionate about it, you work seven days a week. You never switch your phone off. And I'm of talking course. when mobile phones were just coming into play, you know. Yeah, the Motorola's and the, and the Nokia's. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I had the old uh, one at the time as well, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, but mobile phones were just coming prevalent then and they, they weren't around, uh, they haven't been around that long. But all of a sudden you're going on site on a Saturday and a Sunday, you know, and go making sure your client was okay, your end user was okay, and they were buying, and something went wrong, you'd sort it. So you've got that attitude to work. You've always got that mentality to work. Of course. Um, and, and actually, and that employer, although I, I, I now call him a friend, is a friend of mine now, which yep. gave me that opportunity. You know, he always rewarded me for everything that I did. You know, and he made profit and he shared it with me. When he made profit, he shared it with me. And, and he was a partner in the business that we did uh, in, in Prague, in the Czech Republic. You know, okay. and, and, I, and I got paid handsomely for doing that as well. And like I said, after the crash in 2008, I had to, again, reinvent myself and where was I going? And I'd teamed up with a guy who lives overseas who was uh, quite wealthy at the time and he wanted me to he, he was a landlord in this country uh, owned about 100 properties and, and and these these people that you work for obviously there was no linkedin and there was no instagram and there was no facebook and all that at that time so how did you manage to find these people or or, or find yourself doing those jobs was it because you knew them from your previous jobs or was it one led to another, like you had a network of people yeah. that you dealt with and you spoke to and that's what led you to get into those jobs? So in, from I was in the Czech Republic and I got a lot of investors coming through. You know, I, I was taking these guys out, winding them down them again, selling them investment opportunities in the Czech Republic and you keep in touch. You, you don't let them contact say. 14, 15, 15 years down the line uh, because you never know when the next opportunity is going to come or where it's going to come from. 
And this one particular guy who I'd worked with in the Czech Republic uh, rang me up out the blue and just said, uh, I've got some issues with my property in the Czech Republic. Can you help me out? I know the company's no longer going, but I need it sorted. And then, again, one thing led to another. And it was like, can you do this for me full time? And I said, yeah, I can charge you to do that. I'll... And then you go legit, you come limited, you, you get going. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm reinventing a new business here. I'm, I'm creating a new business for myself. Yep. And then I, my, my question to him one day was, I wish I had three million quid. I said, because one man's misfortune is another man's gain. And of I don't course. wish that to sound rude or ignorant to anyone. Yep. But I've got an opportunity here to make a lot of money yep. if I can buy properties for cash. Of course. But by the way, Mr. Smith, I'll give you all your money back after three years. Yep. And the he, he got together with a couple of friends and I got three million quid, basically, to go and buy property. Okay. Uh, and I was buying them from receivers, from... Uh, just, I was on the phone then to find them because I knew I'd okay. been given a few opportunities because I was in that game. So you were, you were, you were I, property sourcing them? and buying the properties for yourself. So you were basically a property source or stroke investor kind of thing. That's what you were doing. Yeah, but I was using their money to do it because I oh. could. You know, and, and of I, course, I, I if you have that, if you have that relationship with your clients yeah. and your investors, then then why not? But then, on the face of it, on the face of speaking to other agents and and uh, uh, the people that you were dealing with, you were the main man. You were the investor. You were the I, you were the person that you were dealing with those properties, correct? They saw me putting the money over, yeah, and of that course. was it. So so I'm buying blocks of ten, blocks of twenty properties at a time, and then I'm I'm re, re renovating them because. I'm buying them because they're the dog low, the really poor, the the rundown, in need of a lot of assistance, and you know. So I buy a block of property, buy, buy a block of ten. It cost me seventy thousand pounds to buy a block of ten. Where was right. that? Doncaster. Wow. Uh, I spend twenty thousand pounds per property. Okay. So I'm twenty seven thousand pounds in per property. They all valued up at seventy grand. And then you, you get all your, you, you, you flipped get it. Did you flip it or did you rent no, no, them out? No. Re rent them 50% okay. loan to value you get 50% back so your investment's back plus a little bit of profit and you, you rent them out and your rent is double what your mortgage is so of course again you know them, them are just going through now 10 years bought they're just being sold and they're being sold for like £100,000 and they've still only got 30 grand on the mortgages but still I mean it, it, you know, it, 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 it's, it's profit right whatever you've made is profit it's all profit but uh, the, the beauty is, and this is where people have got to understand is, if you buy an investment today and you think it's a little bit expensive, you can't always get them for rock bottom. In 10 years' time, it's not expensive. Of course, of course. If you get and past the first couple of years, you're away. I mean, the UK property market has taught me, at least, that if you buy a property today, in 10 years' time, you're easy, easily doubling that money, depending yeah. on where you buy. I mean, if it's London, it could be more, but... Anywhere in the UK, you're easily doubling up. Your, that's the capital appreciation that people get for investing their funds into properties in the UK. And that's oh. why we have an influx of foreign investors coming here to invest their funds. And, and that's right. And, and, and Britain will, and I say Britain on a whole, because that includes Wales and Scotland and Ireland. Of course. Britain on a whole is, is still the best place to invest around the world. Absolutely. Because we, we put a lot more value into our properties than, than what other countries do. Why that's the is the case? I don't know. I can't I answer mean, that question. I mean, do you think? Do you think? Do you think that we are the technology pioneers when it comes to building property through using the right technology? No, I don't. Or think maybe we, we, or maybe we copy that technology from different places and then we model I, ourselves in that way that we have sort of manufactured it or something that, like that because the other countries don't have that exposure. Yeah. I think Germany, from a technological point of view, definitely have the upper hand. And I've been there and watched it. My father worked there as well, by the way. So I saw that first time. And I mean, building those houses in within, 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 within five days and then coming and installing it in, in, into yeah. your back garden or, or a plot of land, whatever it is, you know. So, so, so that's a good example, five days. So... We have modular building is just getting going in this country, okay. right? It's yep. been in, in Germany for 25, 30 years, yep. right? I've watched it. And, yep. and all of a sudden, over here, it's like, hey, can you build that in, in so many days? Well, it's not new technology, but we put more value on it because of where it is. So, 
yeah, we, we, we're, we're benefiting from other people's technology, but for some reason, people still want to invest in I don't hear of anybody who wants to invest in but I think I think that's because the exposure of the country is such around the world. I mean, for example, if you go to Pakistan and you tell them that you should invest in, into property in the UK because this is what it will give you, this is what... Forget the word property, just the word UK will turn their heads around. You know, mm. is it possible? I mean, how can I invest a hundred thousand pounds in the UK and get a property? You know, all that kind of stuff. And 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 that's why I think that people think that that UK is the pioneer when it comes well, to property investment. The, for for me and, and for my opinion, the new pioneering sector which is coming and it's coming quickly over here, and I've got some deals now, you know, what we can talk about is social housing is gonna yep. become so appropriate yep. over here. It's Absolutely. all right having your, having your high end stuff. And, and there's a market between probably 600,000 and 3 million pounds, which will always be recession proof and Brexit proof and of COVID course. proof, which, which will sell. That will always sell. But of the course. lower end of the market uh, and the near end of the market is desperate. And uh, so, one particular deal I've got now, which I'm, I'm just trying to place, is it's a plot of land up near me. I live in Wigan, so it's, it's in the northwest of England. Yep. It's, 10, it's 10 bungalows. It's £650,000 to buy the plot of land. It's about 850000 to build 10 bungalows. But it's a guaranteed 25 years rent with a housing association. Wow. And your rent will be £125,000 a year for the wow. town. With a, 1%, a CPI plus 1% increase per annum for 25 years. So that's about 2.5%, 2.7% per year. And then guaranteed. what happens after the 25 years? Does the housing associa uh, association buy it's it reversion. off? Or, it's reversion or... the years. Okay. All right. The years. So, so you're £1.5 million pound in to build. If you get the... Um, here's where the, 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 it gets a little bit difficult because you might want to get a valuation of a million quid, right? right. So you yep. might be half a million pound in. But bearing yep. in mind, you're making... Even if you mortgage a million pound, you you. You're guaranteed seventy thousand pound a year profit out your rent. Of course. So that'll that'll pay for it anyway. But obviously, it'll take five years to get your money back what you've invested. I mean, you, you, uh, no one, no one can, no one can, no one can start making money the day they invest their funds. No. You no. know, it, it, and especially with property, it takes its time to where you see the fruit reaping in, kind of thing. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's it's the way it works. So and I think it's now, around the world that if you invest in property, you can't just say that from tomorrow I'm going to start making profit because no, it's not going to happen. You you have costs, you have mortgages, you have service charges, you have maintenance costs, all that kind of stuff that will be put together and you will have to fund for that. But then it will come to a point, like you mentioned, five years down the line. Yeah. So you if, will start if you, getting all that in. If you've got a guy now who's looking to invest his money into property, and he doesn't want to do it mundane stuff day in day because there is some difficult stuff to buy and manage and, and that out there. But if you if you say you bought that that development, you probably put one hundred and fifty thousand pound in on your cost of your land, one hundred and sixty. That's twenty five percent cost of your land. Yeah. You can finance the rest to build it, so it doesn't cost you no more. And then of course it, it comes on the valuation. Now on the on the yield, you could value that property on day one at two point three million quid on the twenty five year yield. Yeah, and so you could get all your money back, but the the probability factor is you won't get all your money back, but you'll get the majority of it back. Of course. But if you've got half a million quid or two fifty, and you're prepared to invest that in twenty, if you're looking at a plan for your kids in twenty five years time, that's it. It's then all about properties in twenty five years time will be worth probably best part of eight nine million pound, you know, and paid for because twenty five year mortgages, paid for by the rent, you own nothing. You, you, on reversion there's, in there's no, years. there's no, there's no cost going out from your pocket. No, apart from the initial after five years, that you after do. five, nothing. Yeah, exactly. But five years pays for that, and then after five years, it's like, and bear in mind, you don't need to maintain these, you don't need to manage them. You're just going to check every month. Absolutely. You know that that's it. You're the housing association. Now you've got to get have a strong covenants with the housing association. I understand that, right? But these but then people there are people, dealing with, but then. I, I've but done, then but then housing associations, I mean, I, I work with some of the councils in, in London right now where I'm currently doing a deal with Westminster Council and they are going to be buying that property for social housing. You know, yeah. a, a developer, well, so, council, deal. So another one, another one. And again, you know, please get speak to me. I'll get you guys to speak to Ben if they've got developments. 
There's yeah. another company down in the in the south uh, west called Rent Plus. I'll say it out there, Rent Plus. Yep, yep. They I've will heard buy developments. They, they will buy developments and give you a cost. Okay, you won't get the top dollar for it, but guess what? You've got guaranteed sales. So we're just going through one in Salford, which is uh, 52 apartments. Wow. And the, the, they've they've guaranteed 16 and a half million quid to buy it, and it's 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 theirs. Do you know what I mean? And you flip that deal, the developer's making four million quid profit. So these people will buy big developments. And, and there are and I, there, there are there price. are deals like these in the market to be done. I've got, a lot of a lot, a lot, a lot of the agents <laughs> that I speak to, um, you know, they're like, oh, where can I find the deal? And where can I do this? And where can I do that? And I'm like, look, it's all there. You just got to do your research. And, you know, there is proof out there. And this is why, I do these live sessions so that people get to know that, look, if there are people searching for it, researching for it, and now the medium is so easy. Just go on social media, put your query, and someone's going to answer that. Boom. Yeah. There you go. But so, look how easy LinkedIn is. <laughs> exactly. So, Stuart, I mean, you're currently doing property you're selling property, you're, you're finding investments, you're doing these. Is there something else that you're doing alongside property or is property your main game? Um, I do a lot of other things. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So a property entrepreneur along with a business entrepreneur. I, well, I'm, I'm right. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll give you a little nod, and you can do some research. You can do a YouTube check if you want. I've sure. been on TV. I've been on TV. I, I did a stunt on TV in 2017. I was an Anton Depp set night takeaway singing with okay. Tom Jones. So there's one for you to look up. Um, I'm also a chair of a multi academy trust. Okay. So I'm into governance in schools and stuff like wow. that. That's where wow. the business acumen comes in. Okay. Um, and I'm massive into rugby league. So so I sit on the what they call the community board for rugby league and the Community Board International Group. So I travel the world taking rugby teams to play rugby uh, around the world. So I've been to Australia, Fiji, Canada, And, South and, Africa, and correct America, me if I'm Jamaica. wrong, but Wigan is a rugby hub as well. Alongside football, there is a, a, a rugby... Well, I don't know about of... the football. They're, they're in a little bit of danger of going bust at <laughs> Oh, is it? <laughs> Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, and, I, and I know the administrator begged me to because I've done work with them in the past because that's where you get wow. properties from. Wow. Uh, but, yeah, the rugby's been um, – sorry, the football have been um, really unfairly treated by the previous owner. It's been a, a, a little bit of a – it's a scam, basically. And, and the Wigan Athletic have been penalised very heavily and it's not the, their fault. The, it's a shame. That's what happens when uh, when uh, people get enough money to buy anything that they want and they can't run it. Yeah, uh, I, honestly, it, it, you you want to help them out, but I think I, I I personally this is what I believe, especially with football clubs, because there's so many emotions attached to it from all ages, from from a small child to a grandfather who's seen. Wigan for the best part of his life, basically. And there's so yeah. many emotions attached to it that I think these small clubs, leaving out the Manchester United and Chelsea and the uh, Arsenal and all that kind of stuff, but these small clubs in small towns should be run by its people. That's what I believe. I mean, because the people know what's best for, uh, for, for that club. Like a, a few years ago, I think uh, uh, Portsmouth Football Club they sort of handed everything over to the people and that's how they've sort of come up over the years. But I, that's my view on it. So I'm, I'm friends, again, just through the property circles and how you meet people. And, and So you, I, I, I used to spend a lot of time in London, you know, around Mayfair and, and because that's where all the big boys were. And uh, we went down to London once and I met this guy in the Landmark Hotel. Some um, some 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 big boys are in Holland Park as well, like myself. <laughs> I've been, I've been, I've, 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 listen, we nearly bought the market near Holland Park, by the way, but that's another oh, wow. story. Um, anyway, I met a, a guy called Sammy Yu. Now, Sammy used to be the chairman of Birmingham Football Club. Okay. And Sammy had bought half of Birmingham uh, to redevelop it uh, with the Chinese market. He's from Hong Kong with okay. the Chinese market. And then all of a sudden, Sammy's like, oh, well, I'm into Oxford now. I'll buy Oxford. Now, 
the chairman of Wigan Rugby in Lennigan, I think, used to own Oxford Football Club. So okay. all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm, well, I know that guy, and I know that guy. And before you know it, the connections just make again. You know, and, and it's all it's always property is a really small world. Absolutely. You, you always Absolutely. come back to it. You it, can't look I mean, it. I mean, my, my ex-boss told me when I was working for him all these years ago, and he said, in property, it's not what you know. It's who, who you know. know. Yeah. That's it. And that's what makes the connections. And that's why, I mean, right now, social media has made it so easy for you to get into touch with so many people across the globe that you can know anyone and they will want to buy a property in the UK or do some kind of investment in the UK, whether it be property, whether it be a football club or a rugby club. But it's been absolutely amazing talking to you, getting all that knowledge of how you've done it and how you've got from wanting to be a police officer to <laughs> finding a club for a person that wants to buy a club, a football club. That absolutely amazing journey. Thank you so much for coming on here, Stuart. It's been a pleasure no talking to you. But before you go, I do this with all my guests that come on here. Um, it's, it's about sharing knowledge, which you've done, and I'm uh, grateful for that to you. But it's also about spreading positivity. So on, la on the last note, what positive advice would you like to share with the world today? We've gone through a lot of negativity over the past few years, I would say, especially in the UK, since Brexit to now the pandemic. Uh, what positive advice would you like to share with the world so that they can take that on board and move forward in life? I, I, can, I can say this with passion. Is never put yourself down and always think, I always remember that, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel, you know. Absolutely. Don't believe everything you read in the papers. It, it, it's a lot of its faults. Do your own Or the research. media. <laughs> or the media, social media, not social media, but the multimedia, uh, I, the MSM of this world. I've, News. Got, I've a lot to answer for. Yep. The, yep. The, the very negative, the only ever report the negativity. Yep. This, this country is very, very positive. This country has a lot going for it. I, I'm sick of the political bashing, so don't listen to that. Listen to yourself and have confidence in yourself. Everybody who does, everybody who works and, and works for a living has a lot to offer. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I mean, again, mental health is a massive issue in this country at this moment. Anybody out there who's listening, if you're feeling a little bit down, you know, you want to laugh, ring me up and I'll tell you some jokes. Don't ever feel down. Don't ever feel alone. Be positive. Be ultra positive in what you can achieve. The deals are there. You can make money, but money isn't everything. Absolutely. Happens. Absolutely. And on that note... I'm going to say bye to you. Thank you so much for coming on here. It's been a pleasure talking to you. No problem. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. See you soon, Stuart. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. So, what an amazing live session. Good to be back. Uh, second live session of the week so far. It's been absolutely amazing talking to such amazing people like Stuart, knowing about their journey, how they got from where they were to where they are today. And this is why I do it, so that other people can see how individuals like Stuart have gone out and achieved success in their lives. So thank you to Stuart for coming on here. Thank you to all the viewers that tuned in. It's a pleasure to have you on, and I shall see you again on the next live session very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.